In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the different components that build up your credit. So that way you understand how your credit score is calculated. So as an overview, we're going to be talking about the payment history, the amount that you owe, the length of your credit history, new credit that you apply for, and the different types of credit that you use. These are the components and the different fractions that make up your score. And we're going to go into detail for all of these different components. So the first one is payment history. And this is one of the biggest chunks. It accounts for 35% of your total score. And this is basically how consistently you're making your payments on time. You know, if you have a mortgage and you're always paying late, then naturally the lender is going to be mad and they're going to tell people, hey, this person's not paying late. And you're going to get dinged on your credit score. So make sure you're always paying on time. If you do have an issue with payments one month, definitely call your lender, set up some kind of agreement so that you can pay without them hurting your credit score. And of course, this goes for all kinds of credit, right? Like your student loans, your credit card payments, your car payments, your mortgages. Just make sure that if you have an outstanding loan that you are making the minimum payments on time. Next one is the amount you owe. It's for 30%. So this is also known as a utilization ratio. And this is basically how much credit are you using based on what they allow you to use. If you're someone that is given an opportunity to spend $20,000 a month on a credit card and every single month you're at the $20,000 limit, you are a high risk individual, right? Like you are at the very edge of your borrowing capacity. They want you to be more conservative, right? They want you to have a high balance, but not use that high balance. So having a high credit card balance will negatively impact your credit score because of that utilization ratio. And the ratio is taken by dividing the credit that you're using by the total maximum that you're allowed to make. And anything that's above 30% is seen as a negative to your creditors. So as an example, let's say your total limits on a credit card is $10,000 and you have $3,000 on it, then your utilization for the month is 30%, which is not too bad. Now, the length of your credit history accounts for 15% of your credit score. So that's the period of time that you've had accounts open in your name. So naturally, someone with a long credit history, good payments, they're going to have a better credit score than someone who's 18 years old, has just opened their very first card. So yes, they have a low utilization because they're not using any of their credit and they're making their payments on time. That's all great, but they just opened their line of credit. So we don't know how they're going to perform. So if you're using a credit card responsibly and you've had it open for a long time, it makes sense to continue using this card. And actually, this is why some people even recommend adding their kids to a credit card before they turn 18, because that way it helps them build their credit history by the time they're 18 years old. So the next one is new credit that you apply for. So whenever you apply for credit, it can negatively affect your score. Each inquiry stays in report for up to two years. However, it's not that big of a deal and every hard inquiry affects your score by about five points. Now this is because lenders don't want you to suddenly open up 10,000 different accounts, pull up different lines and then just you know, not pay on all of them. So every time you open a new credit line or you get your credit checked on, it's kind of suspicious, right? Now there's an exception to this. If you're shopping around for a loan, such as a mortgage, a car loan, or a student loan, then typically the lenders will see that and understand, okay, this person is shopping for a mortgage, they're not trying to open up 10 different credit cards on a crazy shopping spree, and they'll only count it as one hard inquiry if you're doing the shopping within a 14 to 45 day window. So for example, if you're shopping for a mortgage and you talk to three different lenders who all do hard credit pulls on you, then your score should only decrease once during the shopping window instead of three times. Again, it's only 10% of your total score, and to get a loan, you do need to pull your credit anyway, so don't worry about them pulling your credit if you do it reasonably. Now, finally, the last component is the different types of credit that you use, also known as a credit mix. So it's not required to have a ton of different types of credit to build a good credit score, but your score does increase. It's like a bonus if you're responsible with the way you use the different types of credit. So an example of different types of credit is like credit cards, you know, a mortgage is a different type of credit, a car loan, that being said, don't deliberately open up different lines of credit to just try to boost your score. Just use what you have normally and you will eventually have your score increase.